last phonics principle, my favorite actually, probably something that upper grade um, phonics um, kids need, probably lots of upper grade kids who maybe aren't even phonics emergencies would might might need um, some multi multi-syllabic word work, right? So let's let's dive into that toolkit um, to see what we have so that you can think about um, using it. So um, one of the things that I wanted to tell you is that there is um, a great uh, protocol um, in and of itself where you um, you know you think to yourself, you know, you can be uh, word harvesting, which is um, a great uh, way. It's another Tim Rosinski thing where the kids are collecting over time. And I'll, I'll give you, you know, you can read this yourself. It's in the folder. But, but um, you know, you have the kids go through and, um, uh, and look for uh, um, multisyllabic words that, you know, interest them. And, and so you, you have, you, you, you go through, you know, you have your kids go through trade books or poetry or song lyrics again, um, written text, and you you make those multisyllabic words more visible for them. You know, the, the students with the teacher go through, like maybe a social studies article or a science article um, or a shared reading text, and you you pull out of the from the authentic text, like you know, what are words? These what are really long words that seem interesting to us? Let's choose the words let's put them up on a bulletin board or let's put them on a chart paper um, and um, let's go through the words and see if we can um, figure them out before we read this article so so you know you're jotting down words and um, you know uh, you can you know, you know you can say to yourself like okay I'm gonna read this out loud we've chosen our words let me read this the kids follow along and then at the end you know, you or you say at the end, I just read this thing out loud. Did you see any interesting words? And the kids, you know, will put them on post-its and put them up on the wall, or they'll call them out and you'll write them down. Um, and then um, you can add your own words, especially if you have like an agenda that you want to get done. Um, the students can also write if you have kids have their own word harvesting journals, which is a lovely thing to have. Um, they can collect these multiple multisyllabic words, um, and you can do this. This, this thing with them called word explosions, um, which uh, I think um, I'm going to just, I think I have a chart for, but basically it's like a word ex explosion is like, um, what's the meaning? Typically the teacher will give like a sentence with the word used in it and the kids come up with their own meaning and on their, you know, their chart in front of them or in their, their word harvesting journal, they write the meaning. And then the kids use that word in a sentence that means something to them. Like, well, how would a middle schooler or a third grader use this word in a sentence? So if the word was reluctant, you know, a middle schooler might use it, I was reluctant to get out of bed this morning. I didn't want to go to school. You know what I mean? And so you say, like, well, how would a middle schooler use this word? Or how would a third grader use this word? And they put that on their, their in their um, journal where they're exploding the word. Then you ask them to think of synonyms. Like, what are other words that mean the same thing? You ask them what are words that mean the opposite of it. Um, and and they, they start to gather these words and have these beautiful charts you know what I mean, written around them. And we, we, we make a purposeful effort to kind of do this work with words um, before we read social studies articles or science articles or before we read a, a common text in, in, in reading. Um, the the be best way to do this is to have a big wall in your class where you're just doing this with words and the wall just gets fuller and fuller and fuller with more multisyllabic words. But sometimes with multisyllabic words, this alone is good for a lesson, right? And it kind of flips things on its heel. So I know that we've been talking about like warm up, you know, warm up, try, try, link. But, you know, with multisyllabic words, it could be something as simple as we're all going to read this social studies article together. I'm going to read it. You're going to look for interesting multisyllabic words that we want to gather, um, and then you're going to read it and then have them and then talk about that. How can we break this down? What are the morphemes we could break down? Reluctant, you know, oh, re, we know re, luck, L-U-C, 
tent. You know, tent can be spelled T-A-N-T, T-E-N-T. Sometimes we make a mistake and we say T-I-N-T, but we don't usually find T-I-N-T at the end of a word. You know, you're talking about the morphemes of reluctant, and then you're talking about the the the, the definition of reluctant, and then you're talking about words that are synonyms and words that are antonyms, and and um, using how would it, how would we use this in our own lives? And pretty soon it becomes this natural thing to talk about multisyllabic words. And this is something that can be done whole class or can be done in small group, right? So um, so that's one way to tackle multisyllabic words. I have all the other ways in here, right? I have, you know, there are prefixes and suffixes so they can make words. Um, I have um, some common texts that they can take a look at. I have commonly misspelled words that you could be um, doing in, in this article or in this uh, folder. Um, I have, you know, taming troublemaker words. There are um, all kinds of articles that they can use, um, you know, there, there are sentences that the kids can study. Um, and, and then I love, 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 love this chart. This chart I would be using when reading in context or reading in isolation. But, you know, one of the things that I notice when working with older kids is that if they don't um, know a word, they typically have like one way to tackle it and they try to like sound each letter out. And then they, if they don't know it, they say something nonsensical and they keep going. And that's how we have kids who lose the meaning of text because they're really not spending time on these multisyllabic words. The best thing that you can do as a teacher is to give them permission, right? To stop, slow down, and work methodically on these multisyllabic words, right? And to teach them how to do that. So we, we work from the beginning, we break things into consonants. We can do that by like putting our hand under our chin and saying the word or clapping when we say the word. One of the things we always do is we keep digraphs together. We would never split digraphs. Do you see how our knowledge of digraphs really is important for multisyllabic words? We always break off endings. We always break before the consonant LE. We carefully checked all parts like scampering. We know scam. We need no per. We know ing. Teaching them that tackling multisyllabic words is better to be tackling it in morphemes than individual letters into chunks, right? And to teach them how to use this chart and make this chart be something that they keep next to them so that when they're reading, this is what they do and, and that they keep they work on these words that they come across in their reading and they really do this work. And then what I wish this chart had at the end of it was, once we figure out that word, we go back to the sentence, the beginning of the sentence, or we go back to the beginning of the paragraph, and we read it again using the word that we now know what it is. Um, and, and I need to, to really emphasize that kids can't do this morphological work, this breaking words into chunks, if they are weak in any other phonics principle. They really, they really have to be strong in phonics principles in order to be able to say, I can take this word and I can break it into chunks. So you don't wanna do um, this multisyllabic work before making sure that all of those other things are done. Now, if it was me in third through eighth grade, I would have one day a week where I was doing multisyllabic work whole class. Um, and one of the things, I just want to see if I put it in the folder, I should have put it in the folder, is uh, you could use um, Pat Cunningham's Nifty 50 Thrifty. And I'm going to um, go out here and find it for you. I can't believe I didn't put it in the, in the, uh, the folder. But Pat Cunningham has this free uh, she did it long time ago, but let me tell you, it's wonderful. Nifty 50, Nifty Thrifty 50 are 50 morphemic key words um, that is for free. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll try to put this into the folder. And it is um, we're, we're a word study program where she's taken 50 words that have the, the most um, prevalent morphemes in the English language. Um, and she gives you examples about how to um, 
just just uh, do lessons with kids. So she's done the first five words for you to show you how she might teach them. Um, and then you can go from there. So I'm going to add that to the multisyllabic folder as well. But that's something that I I would be doing whole class. Like every Friday, we I might do a word ladder and nifty fifty thrifty with with my whole my whole um, class because it's that kind of work that reminds kids that um, that that you know studying words even in upper grades um, uh, is is still important that we still think about trying to tackle words um, in a way that um, you know we can then apply to our own reading so I've added uh, Cunningham's Nifty Fifty Thrifty into that folder. So I really would love if you would take a close look at the folder, see you know what you can find in the folder, see what I've given you in that folder, and think to yourself, how might you um, you know do a small group? One of the things I wanted to show you that I did, and and you know I, I did a, a a format of really what I just said to you, which. Um, you know, there are some things that you could do standing alone. There's this thing called Scylla Search. I have put the video there for you to watch. It is incredible, absolutely incredible, uh, fun little thing for kids to do to, to learn um, about morphemes. Sorry, I, my thing is really slow. Word harvesting, I talked to you about. It's Tim Rosinski's. There's Cunningham's Nifty Fifty Thrifty. Um, so you, these are standalone things. These are things that you could do outside of that, you know, protocol of small groups because it takes a little longer to do. Or you could do some of the things that I have here as a protocol. Um, so I want you to think about, and that's totally up to you what you want to do for this. If you want to research Nifty Fifty Thrifty or, you know, um, fill a search, which is so cool, um, or, um, you know, uh, word harvesting, go ahead and set up lessons for that as well, um, or set up, you know, a protocol. Uh, for multisyllabic using some of the other tools in this folder, uh, whatever works for you and that you want to try. Um, okay.